last week, I shared with you all that I anticipated having a worship experience for you all this morning. And looking over the last four days, I've been thinking about where we are as a people and as a congregation, as a community, as a country. In the last few days, we have gone to Kroger's, Food Lion, Wegmans, Publix. We've been to CVS, Walgreens, and we've seen all of the shelves that are bare. And I've seen nothing but fear, anxiety, and doubt, and worry in the faces of people. It's hard to worship with assurance when you have fear and doubt and stress that is surrounding you and your family. When you see moms and dads going into the grocery store and not being able to bring milk and bread, uh, eggs, uh, things that are necessary for living, tissue, toilet paper, and you have money in your pocket but do not have access to the things that you and your family need, it creates a great deal of doubt and worry and stress. I'd like to speak to those issues paramount in all of our lives today. If you've wandered into this, and this doesn't speak to you, that's okay. But for those of you who are looking for some assurance, some direction, and some affirmation, I want you to be able to hear what I'm going to share with you. This comes from uh, a little book that I've had for years. It's called God's Promises for Your Every Need. It says, when you're experiencing fear, listen to this. I'm going to go very slowly so you can write these down because you may need them this week. In 2 Timothy 1, 7, 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's 2 Timothy 1, 7. Paul was writing this letter to a young minister who had just started his ministry. And he was anxious and doubting his ability and his calling. And Paul was trying to help him not to be driven by fear because of his youthfulness. He was trying to assure him as an older minister the confidence that God was giving to him regardless of where he went and with whom he ministered. Then Paul also wrote to the church at Romans, Romans 8, 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And the same Greek word, Abba, Father, is the same term of endearment that Jesus used on the cross when he said, Daddy, Daddy, when he called upon his Heavenly Father when he was facing imminent physical death. And then in 1 John 4, 18, 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment, but he that fears is not made perfect in God's love. And then, please listen to Psalms 91, 4 through 7, when David, a man who was very courageous and very, very uh, forward and very demonstrative in his power with God, he says, he shall cover you with his feathers. He's talking about like a mother hen gathering her wings around her baby chicks. He's saying, my God protects me like that with his eternal angel wings. Thou shalt trust. His trust shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor by the arrow that flies by day. Nor should you be afraid of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that maybe can waste you at noontime. 
a thousand shall fall at my side and ten thousand by my right hand, but it shall not come nigh to me because my God surrounds me. And then in Proverbs 3, 25 and 26, don't be afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it comes, for the Lord shall be your confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. And one of my favorites by David from Psalm 23, yes, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Peace I leave with you, said Jesus in John 14, 27. So the peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, but I give unto you. And he goes on and affirms his disciples. He says, let not your hearts be troubled or be fearful or depressed, neither let it be afraid, let you be afraid. As we walk through this time, I would love to be able to give you examples of assurance on a timeline, but that's not coming right now. I want you to be assured of what your church family is doing. Rather than hearing a sermon of worship, I want you to hear the courageousness of what's going on. Number one, when we discovered the situation last week, we sat down and wrote a letter to the governor of Virginia. We also wrote a letter to the Henranco Department of Health, as well as to the Virginia Baptist Mission Board, letting them be aware of the fact that we have wonderful facilities in our church. We have the capacity to prepare food in the event of a catastrophic difficulty we have facilities that could be converted for whatever mission or ministry for the benefit of our membership and for our community and those in need. This is what we are doing in our church family. You also need to be aware of what, the fact that in our CDC, one of our mission partners for our church, Joe Mitchell, is working every day getting here at about 5.30 in the morning, taking her thermometer. We have about 40 to 50 children that are still coming to the CDC. These parents need a job. They have no idea from week to week if they'll be having any income. Our church is trying to comply in every aspect for health care for those children, for those parents, for our workers. We're trying to comply with the 10-person ten, ten rule in each room. Our children are not allowed to go into the fellowship hall and dine together. They have to eat in their rooms. We're trying to provide also employment for our teachers. This is what your church is doing. Also, our other mission partner, McShin, under dire circumstances, they've had to curtail and cut back on their staff temporarily and they're still ministering to people who are in need people who are going through recovery and the staff that is still active and still involved are basically risking their health to be in position to help those in recovery and their families we're looking at every venue in our church how we can minister and how we can be available to meet the needs of people, and also to let you, our church family, know that you all are in our prayers. We have not categorically canceled our services and worship experiences a month or two months in advance like other churches. Our church staff meets for prayer every week in my office. All seven of us gather together and pray for one another and pray for you and pray for the issue that's before us. We're looking at every venue, how we can demonstrate actively that we are courageous 
that we're trying to step forward and be the type of leaders that you would want us to be for you and for our community. Please be in prayer for us as we pray for you. This is the day the Lord has made. I believe that the greatness of his presence surrounds us. I believe the comfort of the Holy Spirit gives us assurance. And I want you to be aware of something. As your pastor, I am not fearful. I am not afraid of where I go. The only thing I don't want in meeting compliance with sanitation, with masks, I would never want to be a carrier of any type of cold or flu or the COVID-19. But I want you to know if you need anything, please pick up your phone and call me. I'll be there. I promise you. May the Lord surround you with his love and care and give you the grace that you and your family need. You need someone to run the grocery store for you? I'll do it. You need something for the pharmacy? We'll make sure that it gets there for you. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you for your love, for your care. We thank you for your presence in our life. We thank you for the goodness that you've given to us, for the grace that you've demonstrated in our lives, that you've always been there in the past. And Father, you've taught us how to live and how to pray and how to love and how to serve. We simply ask that you would bless us in this coming week, for we ask this in your name. Amen. Rick Warren is someone I admire tremendously. There's a great quote that he gave. He says, If you give all that you are to God, He transforms your test into a testimony. Your mess into a message and your misery into a ministry. I want you to know that even in these circumstances, our Heavenly Father will be praised and we'll give Him the glory for it. There's someone else that I've admired in my lifetime. It's not biblical, but boy, it sure is powerfully presented in our lives. Babe Ruth once said, a long time ago, he said, never let the fear of striking out ever keep you from swinging. Hatcher Church is going to be in there swinging for the glory of the Lord. God bless you. I look forward to worship with you soon. We have no idea if we'll be able to have our worship services for Palm Sunday, our celebration for Holy Week nor Easter. But you can rest assured as your pastor learns new technology to be able to utilize the facilities that we have. We'll be providing everything we can through the internet because we love you and we want you to know you're very special to us. God bless you.